Welcome, where the Defense Threat Reduction Agency brings together subject matter experts to discuss meeting today's challenges of WMD and emerging threats, increase awareness, and deliver morale-boosting information. And now, today's show. Greetings, and welcome to Discussions with DITRA. I am Darnell Gardner from DITRA PA, and I will be facilitating this event. Today's podcast host will be Mr. Michael Howard, Chief Acquisition Systems Training and Support at DITRA. And he will be accompanied by guest speaker, Ms. Rhonda Moss, Defense Acquisition University, AI Software Engineering, and Agile Coach Instructor. A topic for today will be Artificial Intelligence Challenges and Advice. Please, if you will. Well, good morning. Uh, this is uh, Michael Howard. Management Department. I'm here today with Rhonda Moss of DAU. Uh, Professor Moss, uh, it is a delight to see you today, actually physically, after much communication over the past year. Uh, Would you share a bit of your background with our audience today? Thank you. Certainly, Michael. Yeah, thank you to you and Ditra for having me in today. Um, I've been with DOD for about three years. And I'm part of a cadre of people from the software world who are coming, moving over to DOD to help with our software problem. So I had a 31-ish year career in Silicon Valley and Wall Street, all in software engineering or software program management. And I retired early, as we often do at Silicon Valley jobs, and um, decided to come back and help. I'm a 27-year military brat and wife, so I was raised exclusively on military bases. And I really feel at home here and wanted to come back and help. So DITRA is very engaged. And as you know, uh, have our recurring artificial intelligence, machine learning, and data science sync meeting of all interested parties in the community here at DITRA and some of our external uh, partners as well. So with that uh, stage set, and before I ask the first question, I was listening to the Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff presentation at West Point graduation uh, the other week, and he made a comment that I think is relevant uh, today. He stated that artificial intelligence was the mother of all technologies, where machines are actually developing the capacity to learn and to reason. The Chairman said, These rapidly converging developments in time and space are resulting in that profound change, the most profound change ever in human history. Wow, that's impressive. It was. That's why I wrote it down. (laughs) Uh, With that, uh, there's a lot of uh, discussion about AI, as you know, uh, on the media, uh, within DOD, uh, all around us. There's a lot of discussion about AI. However, what is the correct definition for artificial intelligence? Well, you know, Michael, that is sort of the $64,000 question, really, isn't it? I think it's something that you and I spoke about in our very first uh, phone call during COVID uh, a year and a half or so ago. Um, There really is no single definition that the entire world agrees upon for AI. Um, Even science and academia don't agree. Um, So it it makes it tough to explain AI. In in some ways, it's a buzz term or an umbrella term that has been around since the 1950s. Um, The technical techniques, so to speak, that fall under that AI umbrella, those capabilities that, that we innovate, they're transient meaning something we would have considered AI five or 10 or 20 years ago is no longer AI today. Something like traditional autopilot that all airplanes, virtually all airplanes have today, used to be considered AI and it isn't now because it's become commonplace. Google Maps, something we use on our phone almost every day, used to be considered AI and they do use some AI technology, but generally people won't put Google Maps under the AI umbrella anymore. So we have a situation where we don't always agree on the definition and the technology that lives under that umbrella is transient. 
um, there's a challenge. It's a, that's a challenge for DOD. And it's one reason it's difficult to come up with pr best practice or uh, procedures or education for AI because it's hard to separate AI out from the rest of IT. Um, I will give you a couple of definitions though that DOD has settled on and that I think work for us. The uh, DOD strategy uh, for AI says it's the ability of machines to perform tasks that normally require human intelligence. And that one leaves a lot, lot to the imagination. There's a, there's a better one, I think, in the uh, 2020 National AI Initiative Act. And it says that it's a machine-based system that can make predictions, recommendations, or decisions. And that's key, predictions, recommendations, or decisions, influencing real or virtual environments. And it goes on to further describe it, but I think ultimately that one is a better definition if you're a program trying to figure out whether you're buying AI or not, or whether you have AI or not already in your systems. Very good. I, that leads me to my next question. How does modern software practices apply to artificial intelligence? So at its foundational level, we could think of AI as modern software running on modern hardware, hopefully using better data, right? It's not always better data today, but we will get there. So all AI is some form of software running on some form of hardware, whether the hardware is an autonomous vehicle, a server, or a robot. So we like to try to separate those, but in reality, at the end of the day, for the folks who have to implement and maintain these systems, they really are better software running on better hardware with better data. That means that modern software practice is crucial for AI, absolutely crucial. Um, iterative, agile software development, developing in small increments, and automating the software development lifecycle, which we like to call DevSecOps in DoD, those two practices are, are really what we think of when we talk about modernizing uh, modern software. They are absolutely the bargain basement foundation needed for AI. And the reason is AI brings new automation and new kinds of reasons that we need to be fast, that we need to turn releases around quickly. And if we don't have those uh, modern software practices in place, it makes it tough to get started with your AI program. That makes sense. How can we optimize artificial intelligence at DOD? And second part, how should we be thinking about AI as an enabler for DOD? Well, it, you know, we almost have a mandate, right? That we need to not use AI if we don't need it, but certainly we need to be thinking about AI all the time. Developing AI technology for the battlefield is absolutely a top priority for the department. We know our adversaries are doing it. Um, and, and they continue to scale up their own AI and machine learning capabilities at an exponential pace. So as the innovations come at us, um, we don't have five or 10 years anymore to sort of get started using a new technology. We have maybe two years before it might even itself be obsolete and we're on to the next thing or the newest version of that. Um, our adversaries aren't waiting as long as we are, at least China isn't. Um, I think we've seen with Ukraine, we're not really sure <laughs> um, if everything we've heard about Russia over the years is actually happening to modernize their weapon systems. But we know that, we certainly know there are a, a lot of capable Russian and Chinese software developers because many of them worked in the United States. So I would say, you know, in my 30 years in software development, the majority of people I worked with were here on visas from India, China, or Russia. So in some ways, you can think that they built a lot of what we have today, whether it's uh, in the private sector or DOD. So the imperative, the, uh, the, the um, enabler for us is we've got to keep up with our adversaries. AI is already really ubiquitous across the department today, if you think about it. Tools that we use every day when I, when I talk with you, Microsoft Teams, that has AI in it. Even the latest version of Microsoft Excel, if you use the the Microsoft 365 version, it has AI in it. Um, so so you, AI is ubiquitous already in terms of our business systems and our systems that we use to uh, work in our everyday lives. Um, much of DOD's AI will be for the defense business systems. 
I believe. Um, doesn't mean we won't use AI in, the, in the, those types of weapon systems and special systems that DOD does. We absolutely will, and we are. Um, and we certainly look to enable machines to become those trusted, collaborative partners of warfighters in the future. So then, is it best to buy or build that's a great question. Indeed. Great question. You and I are both in the acquisition business, acquisition education even. Um, I would say initially, most of what we will do is buy AI. The vendors, particularly the cloud software vendors, are coming out with more and more uh, packages you'll hear of uh, buying AI as a service or machine learning as a service. Um, so, so you'll be able to get packages of AI that you can sort of use against your problem. Um, and so for, certainly for DBS, we will, I think, most of the time buy AI. Many of our vendors that we already use today are touting AI. We call this applied AI. There's sort of two ways to think about AI. There's applied AI, where you're applying AI to a problem. And it could be an everyday problem. It could be how to use AI to better engineer a system, how to use AI to better test software. That's applied AI. Certainly most, if not all, of our vendors are touting AI, so we're buying it already. And, and you know, in the cases where they can employ experts who understand AI and data science um, better than we can, we will buy more AI initially, I think, and, and probably for a very long time. Okay, that leads me to my next question, and it fits perfectly. What type of support structure does AI technology require for full implementation in DOD? That's a great question. You know, um, Josh Marcuse, when he did his time on the Defense Innovation Board creating guidance, uh, early guidance for DOD on AI, he said that we need to pay attention to the AI ecosystem. And what he meant by that was, and I think by the way they ended up calling it AI readiness. So are you AI ready? Um, and, and what he meant by that was four pillars really. Uh, people, do we have the right skill sets? Data, right? Data is so important in AI. It's so important to get your data ready long before you ever plan to implement AI. Um, organization, culture, and technology, the technical infrastructure. So those four areas to support AI are key. Um, it's difficult because, uh, as Josh so, so wisely said, he said the average program manager today in the department who starts an AI project is almost certainly starting with a deficit. And that means the um, infrastructure that we have and the data that we have that they will need and potentially the skill sets of the people and the culture and the organization aren't AI ready yet. So that program manager will not only own what is the eventual AI solution, they will also own getting their part of that world, of that AI ecosystem, up to snuff before they can really effectively implement um, an AI solution. An example of that might be networking, right? So we've all noticed some slow networking occasionally around the department. And, and by the way, that happens everywhere sometimes. Um, it, it, in order to pass around the large amounts of data that an AI project will need and to pass it around quickly, whether we're pulling it, pulling it in off of sensors or whether we are rerunning machine learning operations over and over to improve it, we'll need significantly better uh, bandwidth and infrastructure than we have today, quite likely. So it'll be on that program manager to get that upgraded for whatever their part of the world is all the way out to their edge uh, in order to effectively uh, create and implement that AI solution. Well, it sounds like infrastructure is critical to AI. Absolutely, yes. Very important. So I hope uh, that everyone gets that message. In our time left, I've got a, just a couple of more questions. What are the five most common reasons AI projects fail? That's a great question. Um, the, uh, there's a lot of research on this, and it mostly comes from Silicon Valley, but the, the number one uh, point of advice really is ensure that the problem you're trying to solve really needs AI. So sometimes in DOD, we, we like to issue mandates. We really want to move everyone on to emerging technology. 
And somebody might say, you know, implement that AI system by end of year or use AI by end of next fiscal year to get that going. Um, we can't skip the part where we discover whether that problem needs to be solved by AI. So there are a lot of data analytics problems in the world, and there's a fine line in some cases between data analytics and AI, where we can really just use data analytics, and you'll have an easier project on your hands quite likely. Uh, so don't use AI when you don't need to use AI or until you need to. Um, and I'd say the other four areas really fall within those uh, AI readiness pillars that the Defense Innovation Board created for us. Data, you know, there's a lot of sayings about data in, in AI. You've probably heard it, data is the new oil or data is the new electricity. Data, data, data. We have some very strong data strategy statements. One of them being all leaders in DOD will treat data like a weapon system. So, so what does that mean, right? To me, it means we better start thinking about our data before we get to the AI project because it's the same data we're gonna use that we're using today in our, in our other systems. We're just going to have access to more of it. So, so uh, not preparing your data, failing to get your data cleansed, labeled, failing to get access to it, everything that you need for your project is a big failure point for AI projects. Sometimes they'll start up and say, we just can't get the data from the contractor that we need. So when we're contracting for new systems, we're always thinking about data and intellectual property and what we'll have access to. Think about uh, also needing access to data you may not think about today that you're gonna put into an AI system. Um, and, and we can help teams go through that if needed. Um, you know, call DAU or, or, or come on to our DAU website and we're going to be putting up in the next month or so job aids to help uh, programs figure out what they need to ask for in terms of data. Uh, technology infrastructure, same thing. You know, we know we have these large infrastructure projects going on in DOD. Um, make sure that your infrastructure that you need to pass that data around and that you need to bring in and get, get back out to the edge so the warfighter can use it, make sure you've got that bandwidth and that, those pathways. People, don't start a project without AI knowledgeable people identifying which ones you need or where to get them. And they're, they're scarce and they're expensive, but there are uh, a lot of good folks in DOD working on that problem. The, the uh, Joint AI Center, which we now call as of two weeks ago, the CDAO, um, they have data experts that you can tap into. Um, and, you know, we don't think we will be able to buy a lot of data scientists, for instance, uh, out there in the world, but we certainly have some within some of our agencies who are tasked with working on AI that we can loan out or who can advise your data teams. So there are ways to get around some of the roadblocks for skill sets, um, and you can also start upskilling your own people. And I think, Michael, that's what you and I talk about quite a bit. Um, and so we're, we're looking constantly at that. And, and then your culture. So those really make up the, the areas that contribute to uh, AI project failure. On the flip side, let's talk about, and you've actually alluded to that to some degree, uh, can you provide some advice to achieve successful AI projects? Yeah, you know, uh, sort of circling back to what we talked to at the beginning. At the foundational level, let's think of AI as better software, running on better hardware, um, with hopefully better data. So let's, let's make sure we have things like Agile and DevSecOps running. We think they are required, virtually required for AI. And I say that because in, in the department today, some of us might think of DevSecOps as that's something new we need to get to. But in the software world, that's something we should have had running like an eight-day clock five years ago. We should have automated our software development lifecycle. Well, I will tell you that if you take on an AI project, and, and it will most likely have some machine learning, we know today that most of our AI projects are machine learning. Machine learning in itself has its own new operational cycle that you have to add to the software development life cycle. You're going to need to do some things that you don't do today in DevSecOps and you're going to need to do them iteratively and very quickly in order to get those models to work in machine learning ops, in order to get that outcome to be what you want it to be. If you haven't already implemented DevSecOps, 
you're going to have a tough time implementing machine learning ops. So our advice would be uh, to achieve successful AI projects is modernize your software process and, and, and uh, increase your skill sets. So you're right, it is pretty similar to what we just talked about. Well, that actually concludes uh, this session. And I want to thank you again for uh, sharing with the digital audience today. It's been a pleasure, as I said, uh, especially for me to meet you personally as we've been communicating you know, by uh, landline and, and uh, uh, online. But uh, again, thank you. we're delighted. Thank and you. I feel the same way, Michael, too. I have to say that I see a lot of AI interworkings across DOD, and I think you do, too. I, I have to say that DITRA's community of practice, so to speak, what, I, what you call that AI, uh, ML, data science meeting that you have, is tremendous. I have not seen anything else like it across the department where an agency values that emerging technology and learning about that emerging technology and currency on the emerging technology as much as DITRA does. So hats off to you and your agency because you're doing a great job uh, with your AI readiness. Well, thank you. I will bring that message back to uh, our chair of the working group, Aaron Smith. And, uh, Please do. You'll be delighted to hear that. Please do. Thank and you thank again. you. Thanks for listening. To hear more podcasts, don't forget to subscribe on Google Play or wherever you listen. You can find out more about DITRA at DITRA.MIL.